What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I want to show you the Ecowit Whip Boy, a 7-in-1 smart weather station that allows you to have remote access, and best of all, supports a local API which allows you to integrate it easily with Home Assistant. I'm gonna unbox it, show you some of its features, show you how to integrate it with Home Assistant, and then I'm gonna show you some testing I've done with this device. Full disclosure, Ecowit did send me this device in exchange for an honest review, but they didn't tell me anything I should say about it, so it's gonna be my opinion and that's it. The Whip Boy is a seven in one wireless weather station that has a ton of different sensors in it. It's got UV index, rain, temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction, and solar radiation sensors. In the package, you get the Whitboy itself, you get the EcoWit gateway, which communicates with the Whitboy, a power supply, an ethernet cable, and some detachable bird spikes. The device itself is powered by the solar panels on the top, but also it has a slot for two AA batteries. It has very low power usage, broadcasting a signal at 915 megahertz, giving it an advertised range of 150 meters. Other areas of the world do use different frequencies and you can buy them that way from Ecowit, but US uses 915. The hub that comes with it can be purchased separately and that thing picks up the RF transmission from the Whipboy as well as other Ecowit devices that they sell. The hub is also what connects it to the internet using 2.4 gigahertz or local area network connection. This allows you to access the data remotely via the Ecowit app web browser or third party app like Weather Underground or Weather Cloud. This will also allow you to define your own server that you can send your data to. So you can send your data to your smart home if you have platforms like HomeSeer or Home Assistant. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. One other thing with this hub is that it has a built-in temperature and humidity sensor. So you're gonna see that data also appear giving you the indoor temperature and humidity as well as the outdoor from the Whipboy. You can see a cable coming off the Whipboy, kind of like a tail, and that's actually a cable for supplying power to a little heating element inside the device. If you live somewhere that gets snow in the winter like I do, the Whipboy's little heating element is gonna automatically turn on to melt off that snow or ice, defrosting this thing out. You might be wondering how the Whipboy could be so compact compared to other weather stations and yet still be able to collect that much data and the secret is in the design of the sensors. For example, the wind speed isn't measured by a typical anemometer that gets hit by the wind and spins and gives you the wind speed, but instead uses four ultrasonic transducers placed on the underside of a gap in the body of the device. These measure the velocity, the speed and direction of the wind by measuring the time between a gust of wind entering that gap and exiting it. Since there are four sensors placed at 90 degrees, the sensors can tell based on the strength of the gust of wind in each of the sensors, which direction it's going as well. The haptic piezoelectric rain sensor on the top senses the speed and size of each raindrop and calculates rainfall rate. If you saw my automated flower bed watering video, then you saw Ecowit's standard rain gauge, which is a bucket style in which a bucket fills up with water and then tips. And as it tips, it records a certain amount of volume of rain has come down. This is the typical style, but it has more moving parts and so can get stuck or fail, unlike the piezo sensor. Another cool feature of this design is that the bottom half of the device actually can be detached from the rest of it. The bottom half of the device actually contains the temperature and humidity sensor and also has the compression mount at the bottom. And this means that if the mount breaks or the temperature and humidity sensor fails, you could just replace that part instead of the entire whip boy. In general, this design has less moving parts than your typical weather station, and so there's less that can mechanically fail. One other thing, the whip boy has these plastic nubs all over the top of it, and I was wondering what they're for, so I reached out to Ecowit, and they told me that they're supposed to break the surface tension of any water that lands on the top of the device so that it runs off rather than pooling there because if you think about it, water pooled on the top could affect the quality of the data recorded by the piezoelectric sensor. The Whitboy has a compression collar for a one inch pull mount and can be easily installed by loosening the collar, sliding the Whitboy onto a pole and then tightening up the collar. Before we do that though, we need to install the batteries. Although the device is powered by a solar panel, it needs to have a battery backup. 
The battery hatch can be opened with a flathead screwdriver and you can pop in a set of AA batteries and close it back up. Note that the hatch has an O-ring around its edge to prevent moisture, so try not to damage that. Another thing you want to notice is that there's a small letter N right above the battery cover. That indicates the north direction. So if you want your wind direction to be recorded correctly, you need to place the whip boy so that the N is facing north. According to the instructions, there are actually three different ways to set up this gateway, but I'm just gonna show you the easiest one and you can always follow directions if you buy one of these and do whichever way you want. You can either hardwire the hub with ethernet cable or you can just connect it to your Wi-Fi. So I just went ahead and connected it with Wi-Fi. You're also gonna need the Ecowit app, so go ahead and download that from the Play Store. You're gonna to need to go ahead and set up an account. And once everything's set up, you can go ahead and add a gateway. Plug in the power to the hub and then search for the Wi-Fi access point that it broadcasts on your phone. Connect to the access point, scan for your local Wi-Fi network and enter the passcode. Tap submit to save that info. You're not supposed to connect to a five gigahertz network, only a 2.4 gigahertz network, but mine are both named the same. So I had to risk it and I picked the first one on the list and that happened to be my 2.4 gigahertz network. You'll be asked to disconnect from the gateways access point and then connect to the network the gateway is connected to. And then you'll have to wait until the provisioning is complete. Tap view online data when the button appears. Okay, so that's it for connecting this thing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the app and then we'll go ahead and connect it to Home Assistant. You can see here a list of sensors, each separated out into cards. Each card has sensor data displayed in an aesthetically appealing way so you can see exactly what you need to at a glance. There's an overflow menu in the top left of each card that gives you the option to change the card's title or move it to the top or bottom or sort all of the cards. In the top right, there's a graph icon which shows you a chart of that sensor's values over time. Notice I tapped the temperature and humidity card, but only temperature data is showing. Don't worry, you can switch to humidity or any of your other sensors by tapping the overflow menu in the top right corner of the graph page. You can view the data in different time intervals, daily, 24 hour, weekly, monthly, yearly, seven day, or even a custom interval. If you tip your phone to the side, you can see the data a little bit better. Tapping on the screen will tell you the value of the sensor at that point in time. Back on the home screen, you can see the card in the very top that has left and right arrows as well as sunrise and sunset times. Tapping these arrows would allow you to navigate between hubs if you had more than one in the app. As we scroll down through the sensors, you can kind of get an idea of how each one is displayed. The indoor temperature and humidity are measured by temperature and humidity sensors that are in the hub like I mentioned before. So hub placement does matter for this data. If you stick it in a really hot closet, you're gonna have high temperatures on that. The first rainfall sensor is actually my standalone rain gauge that I showed in my automated flower bed watering video. So I'm gonna change the title of this one so that I know the difference between this and the Whip Boys Piso rain gauge. You can see the Whip Boys gauge is called Rainfall Piso, so I know the difference. At the bottom, you can also see the two soil moisture sensors that I used in my flower bed watering video. They got picked up automatically by the hub, just like the rain gauge, super cool. However, I think this means that if someone else, like my neighbor, had a hub, they'd be picking up these sensors too. You can see with the graphed data that the moisture spikes in my soil whenever my watering system turns on. The only other card is the battery card, which gives you the voltages of any battery that it can read from the sensors that you have. Okay, so let me just show you a couple more things in the app. If you tap the overflow menu in the corner, you can tap graph and it'll allow you to select any of the sensors you want to view in chart mode. You can also create alerts based on sensor thresholds and these alerts will show up via push notification as well as email. There's also a share option, which allows you to share your hub with someone else but I'm not gonna be testing that. However, if you hit the plus button and tap the public option, you'll see the different sensors that are set to public. They're set there by default, and this is a bit of a privacy concern. I'll show you why in a bit, but let's finish the rest of these options. The sensor ID option shows you the devices connected to your hub and allows you to change your ID. The calibration option is pretty great because it allows you to add offsets and gains to the different sensors. This way you can match them to whatever standard you want, which seems pretty handy. It even has a wind direction offset. So if you couldn't mount the Whip Boy facing directly north for some reason, you can go ahead and just add an offset in degrees. Super cool. 
The rain totals option allows you to fine tune the piezoelectric rain sensor so that it gives you proper rain rates, etc. But it seems a bit complicated, not really sure how to adjust it properly. So I'm not going to touch it unless I really have to. The others option allows you to change the update interval and also allows you to send data to DIY servers. This is the option we'll use to send the data to Home Assistant, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The sub-device option just allows you to add a sub-device to the hub. Back on the home screen, if you tap the menu button on the top left, you'll see an option for weather map. Tap that and it's going to bring up a map of your current location. And on that map, you'll see the various outdoor temperatures in different locations. These temperatures actually come from EcoWet users that are sharing their data publicly. If you tap the temperature reading, it'll take you to a view that shows their hub and any sensors connected to it that are publicly shared. In the upper right, you can change the sensor to different types, including cameras. If you tap someone's camera, you can see still images that are grabbed every update interval, and you could even play them back as a kind of tie lapse. While it's really cool that you can share data like this and add to public data so everyone can use it, it's this feature that really gives me a cause for concern when it comes to privacy. From what I can see, sharing publicly is on by default, and so users might not even know that they're sharing data publicly, and they could be sharing their camera feed with strangers. I was able to go to someone's camera, look at historical images that were taken every update interval, look through those images in time lapse, and find an image of a person living there. I could then even download the footage to my phone. Even though you can turn the sharing off, to me, having it on by default is a major privacy issue. I may be missing something here, but the fact that I can download someone else's time lapse at all is pretty crazy. And that's without their knowledge. Okay, so one last thing in the app, and that is the settings option in the main menu on the app. This allows you to change measurement units and date and time formats, light or dark theme, language, and other miscellaneous settings. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the app features. So let's go ahead and show you how to add this thing to Home Assistant. First of all, Home Assistant does have a native EcoWit integration and its IoT class is Local Push, which is the best class because not only is your data confined to your local network, but data will be pushed from the device to Home Assistant rather than Home Assistant having to go polling for it. In Home Assistant, go to Settings, Devices and Services and tap Add Integration. Search for EcoWit and tap it, and you'll see a success message that pops up. It gives you instructions on setting up Home Assistant as a server in the EcoWit app. Head to the app, tap your hub if it's not already selected, tap the overflow menu in the top right, choose the others option, and then tap the DIY upload servers. Tap enabled, and then you'll need to fill in the server IP just as Home Assistant tells you, and it's just the IP address of your Home Assistant instance if you forget it. Next, you need to paste in that path string just as it shows in Home Assistant. But when doing it on the mobile app, like we are here, leave off that first forward slash since it'll be included by default in the app. The easiest way for me to copy something from my computer to my phone is to copy it and paste it into a Google Keep note and then open that on my phone. Once you've pasted it in, Change the port to 8123 as instructed and tap save. You're gonna get a success message and then you can go ahead and head back to Home Assistant. In the devices and services page, you should now see the EcoWit integration. And you can tap the device to see all the sensors and wow, there are a ton of them. I really just love how many sensors there are in Home Assistant. You can see all the different things that I showed you in the app all appear here and each one of them can be analyzed, can be used for automations and it really takes your Home Assistant instance up a notch to have local weather data. One thing I wanted to do was test the difference between the piezo style rain gauge and the bucket style that I'm used to. So I put both of them next to each other and let them go through a couple days of rain. Then I plotted the data from those sensors on Grafana. If you don't have Grafana with InfluxDB, I highly recommend you add these to your Home Assistant instance. Grafana allows you to visualize the data just the way you want. You can make some really pretty graphs. And InfluxDB allows you to store data longer than the 10 day limit that Home Assistant has. You can store data for as long as you want until you fill up your storage space and you can save data from every single sensor you have. 
Looking at the comparison charts, you can see that the rain rates and total accumulation match in the early parts of a rainy day, but as the day goes on, less rain is picked up by the piezo sensor, and the bucket style shows a higher rate of accumulation. I think this is because even though there are nubs on the top of the whip boy, the rain pools on the top, muffling the haptic impact of the raindrop, reporting a lower rain rate than it should. I may be able to adjust for this in the calibration page, but I'm not sure that it's worth it. It's really going to take some more testing and longer periods of rain to determine how accurate these two are. I also picked up a standard rain gauge that just collects the water and tells you how much rain you had. I compared it with these two and it aligned a lot more with the bucket style sensor than with the piezo sensor. Well, that's pretty much it for this review. I hope it helped you understand a little bit more about this device and how it works. And I hope some of the testing made you more or less confident with the data that this thing records. And I also hope it showed you how easy it is to add this thing to Home Assistant. And I hope you love data as much as I do. I'm hoping to take a look at the Tempest Weather Station, which is one that's similar to this. So stay tuned and I'm hoping I can get my hands on one of those. Overall, I really do like the hardware this thing is sporting, and I love all EcoWit hardware that I've tested so far. And I love how it provides some local data for me in Home Assistant. And while I do think the app needs a bit of work, it's still pretty feature rich and still pretty intuitive. My big concern, of course, is privacy, and EcoWit could fix this by making public sharing of data off by default even though I really do like to see that map of all those temperatures. I'm gonna be doing more reviews like this, as well as WLED videos and Home Assistant how-tos, so if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you like this video. If you wanna support the channel, you can become a member or you can pick up some custom t-shirts from my shop. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See ya.